play road to the CFP has been wild 312 Reese Davis looks back on the chaotic first nine weeks of the college football season heading into the first college football playoff rankings. 312,115 p.m. BST GRAPEVINE, Texas members of the College Football Playoff Selection Committee arrived at the Gaylord Texan Resort early Monday morning, each of them making the most of the limited personal time they had before convening to determine their first top 25 ranking of the season. Ohio State Athletic Director Gene Smith had already logged five miles, and Oregon Athletic Director Rob Mullins got his workout in, too. Former Virginia Tech coach Frank Beamer went to read the morning paper and former Vanderbilt coach Bobby Johnson was preparing for the group's administrative meeting. After gathering as a group for lunch, it was time to turn their cell phones off and get to business. The 13-member committee would remain in Selection Central until 9 p.m. as they had their first deliberations. They meet again Tuesday morning before revealing their top 25 at 7 p.m. ET ESPN and ESPN app. Here are five questions we are most interested in seeing the committee answer one. Who's no, when it might not be as easy as it sounds. Picture the resumes of Alabama 80 and Georgia Bulldogs 80, side by side, as the committee surely will using the flat screen monitors inside Selection Central. 538 will update its college football playoff projections after every game and new selection committee ranking. Projections Alabama has been dominant, but the Crimson Tide have not beaten an opponent currently ranked and have only one win over a Power 5 opponent currently with a winning record Texas AM. The value of their win over Florida State in the opener has diminished drastically, even considering the season-ending injury to starting quarterback DeAndre Francois in that game. Georgia has one of the best wins of the season, on the road against Notre Dame, and has beaten two ranked opponents, including number 21 Mississippi State. Both teams have similar results against common opponents in wins over Vanderbilt and Tennessee. The committee does not project and will not consider any future opportunities left on their respective schedules. The committee is in no way beholden to the AP or coaches' polls, which have ranked Alabama number one each week this season. It is looking for the best and most accomplished teams through the first nine weeks of the season. How much will the eye test and the tide's sheer dominance play a role in where they are ranked too? What kind of controversy will the order of own a loss teams spark? Ryan McGee is a one-man selection committee, and he has all the answers to your questions about the first CFP rankings Tuesday, 7 p.m. ET, ESPN and ESPN app in the playoff race to come. The college football playoff selection committee releases its first rankings of the season on Tuesday, 7 p.m. ET on ESPN and ESPN app. Here's what you need to know about the process. If Ohio State is in the top four and ranked ahead of Oklahoma, it would reveal a lot about how the committee values head-to-head -head results and how highly it regards the Buckeyes. Ohio State lost 3,116 at home to Oklahoma in Week 2 but is coming off what could be the most impressive win of the season at home against Penn State. The committee uses head-to-head -head results as part of its criteria to distinguish between comparable teams. Think of it as a tiebreaker. If the committee believes the Sooners and the Buckeyes are comparable, then they will factor in their sept. 9 meeting. Have the Buckeyes made enough progress since that loss that the committee no longer deems them even comparable to OU, even as both teams have one loss? A similar situation played out last season with Ohio State and Penn State. Even though Penn State beat Ohio State, the Ona loss Buckeyes were ranked higher than the Twalys Nanny Lions in each of the committee's rankings, even after Penn State won the Big Ten Championship. It simply viewed the Buckeyes as the better team. Where will the committee rank defending national champion Clemson after the Tigers lost to Syracuse? Joshua S. Kelly use it today sports other own a loss teams to watch are Clemson, which lost to Syracuse but has an otherwise impressive resume, and Notre Dame, whose only loss was to Georgia. If Clemson is in the top four, it will show that the committee can forgive a bad loss, even before a conference title has been won to compensate for it. Point three. How will the committee regard undefeated teams with weaker schedules? Undefeated Wisconsin 80 and Miami 70 are the leaders in the Big Ten West and ACC Coastal, respectively, but have been overshadowed by the frontrunners in their opposing divisions because of strength of schedule. Wisconsin's non-conference opponents are a combined 11-15. If the Big Ten opponents they've played, only Northwestern 53 has a winning record. There is currently not one ranked opponent on the Badgers' schedule all season. Miami's non-conference schedule Bethune-Cookman and Toledo docent compare to that of Simona Loss teams. The ACC opponents Miami has beaten have a combined record of 15-25, and some of those games have been nail-biters. 
Miami also has yet to play any ranked opponents, but unlike Wisconsin, there are still opportunities in the regular season to do so, starting Saturday against No. 13 Virginia Tech, followed by No. 5 Notre Dame on November 11th, the committee ISNT looking ahead, though, so Miami will be judged only on what it has done to date. How far will these undefeated teams fall, or will the committee reward them in spite of their weaker schedules for? If Notre Dame is in the top four, which Power 5 conferences are out? The easy answer is the Pac-12 and the Big 12, simply because they are the only two Power 5 conferences that don't have any undefeated teams left. The Pac-12 has the most reason to be concerned. The South is guaranteed to have at least a Twalis winner. The North needs to hope Washington runs the table, because it's the only own a loss team remaining in the league. It's more complicated in the Big 12. What, if the committee gives Oklahoma more credit than it is currently being given in the polls TCU's loss hurt the league, no way around it, but with three own a loss teams sitting near the top of the standings, the Big 12 also has more contenders still hanging on than the Pac-12 does. The problem is they all still have to play each other, starting with Oklahoma at Oklahoma State on Saturday. Pay attention to where the committee ranks Oklahoma and Washington. It will tell us a lot about who's really on the outside and how far they have to climb to get back in point five. What really constitutes a good win? Selection Committee Chair Kirby Hokett said he doesn't pay attention to the AP poll. What matters now is the committee's ranking, and how many wins contenders earned against teams ranked in the committee's top 25, so where does the committee rank USC and NC State that's important to Notre Dame's resume? Where does it rank Virginia Tech and Auburn? That matters to Clemson. And how about surging Iowa State that's important to the entire Big 12 while the bulk of the attention is always drawn to the top four, it's often teams 12-25 that are the most difficult to rank and can have the biggest impact on the contender's overall strength of schedule.